This is the second part of the ASAD model. In the first part, we've derived the curves AS and AD curves. And now in this part, we look at the adjustment dynamics from the short run equilibrium to the medium run equilibrium. And afterwards, we will use this framework to analyze the effects of um, expansionary fiscal policy in the short and in the medium run, contractionary monetary policy or disinflation policies in the short and medium run, and the effects of an oil price shock. In the discussion so far, I've only mentioned what I call the short run equilibrium, basically, at the intersection of the AES and AD curves, where we have equilibrium output or income and equilibrium price level. However, this need not be the medium run um, equilibrium where uh, prices are equal to price expectations and output is equal to natural output. What does this mean? So we have a certain natural output level in an economy with a natural rate of unemployment for which prices would not accelerate. So that's the non-accelerating uh, uh, inflation rate of unemployment, basically. And price expectations would be consistent with actual prices and we would not have an acceleration of inflation. That would be at the natural level of unemployment. If actual um, unemployment is lower and therefore output is higher than the natural rate of unemployment and therefore natural output, then the economy is kind of overheating. The, it produces more, the unemployment rate is below the unemployment rate um, that uh, leads to a stable inflation rate or leads to price expectations being in line with the price level. And therefore, we would have an increase in the actual price level over time. And this would manifest itself in a leftward shift of the AS curve. So if we are in this situation where uh, the expected price level is lower than the actual price level and natural output is lower than um, actual output, then we would have a shift of the AS curve to the left because unions and workers would start to demand higher wages. They would adjust um, uh, their uh, price expectations upwards and therefore the AS curve would shift to the left and we would have a, a lower level then of employment than in the initial short run equilibrium and a higher price level. But still at this point, uh, the um, uh, price expectations would increase further because also here actual output is above natural output and therefore the S curve would shift further to the left. And this process would last until in the new equilibrium where the, the final AS curve intersects with the AD curve, employment is back to a level that is consistent with the natural output level. So the economy converges back from this short run equilibrium of an overheating economy back to an economy where the actual output is equal to natural output and the price expectations and is equal to the actual price. And we have a new and higher price expectation equilibrium here. So what this means is that actually due to the overheating of the economy, the prices increased, price expectations increased, but actual output in the medium run did not increase. So this overheating led to an increase in output above the natural output level for uh, during the short run. But in the medium run, the economy converged back to the situation of the natural output level, but now with the higher price pressures, a higher level of uh, the prices and the higher price expectation of labor unions. Now we can use these insights to describe the effects of changes in policies. For that purpose, we start with the ASAD model and assume that the short run equilibrium and the medium run equilibrium are initially the same. So the economy has an actual output level that is equal to the natural output level and the price level is equal to the expected price level. Now the government decides to pursue expansionary fiscal policy. So I don't know, they invest in roads, sports, whatever. And that, of course, would affect the IS curve and it would lead to a higher output level in the short run. So the AD curve would shift to the right here. We would have a higher level of output than the natural level of output and a higher price level than the price expectations. And then in the medium run, exactly the dynamics that we described before kick in. So due to the fact that actual prices are higher than price expectations in the short run, 
Labor unions and workers would adjust their price expectations upwards in wage negotiations, and that would lead to a reduction in the uh, uh, shift of the, in the AS curve to the left, and the economy would converge then back to the situation where um, the new medium-run equilibrium, the new uh, output level is equal to the natural output level, but actually the price level and expected prices are then higher. So what expansionary fiscal policy can achieve here is a temporary boost in, uh, in employment and output, but in the medium run, the economy would move back uh, and the price of this uh, short run expansion would be a higher price level. Now we look at the opposite case, a contractionary policy. And let's assume here, because the prices were high in the previous example, let's assume now the central bank wants to pursue disinflationary policies. So in this case, we would have contractionary monetary policies and the central bank would uh, increase the interest rate. So that would affect the LM curve and therefore the AD curve would now shift to the left. So we would have lower demand in equilibrium and we would have a short run equilibrium in which actual output and income are below the natural level of output and income. And the price level is then below the price expectations. Now, what would happen to the AS curve? Exactly the opposite as in the previous example. So we have that then in this equilibrium, the actual prices would be below the price expectations. And that's what wage negotiators, labor unions and so on would uh, see, and therefore they would adjust their price expectations downwards. Now, if they adjust the price expectations downwards, they would uh, demand lower wages, which means the AFS curve shifts to the right, and we um, have an increase in output and income from this short-run equilibrium to the medium-run equilibrium, where the medium-run equilibrium is again the equilibrium where actual output is equal to the natural level of output, and now the price expectations and the actual price level are lower than in the previous equilibrium. So that means we achieved a disinflationary um, uh, situation. The central bank created a short run recession in order to bring down the price pressures. Now finally consider what could happen in case of an oil price shock. We are again in the situation where the short run equilibrium is equal to the medium run equilibrium. So price expectations are equal to actual prices and uh, actual output is equal to natural output. And now the economy is hit by an oil price shock. So oil prices increase exogenously and that leads to an increase in price expectations. This is shown here. So the AS curve shifts to the left, price expectations increase. The new short run equilibrium is then um, with an output level that is below the initial natural output level and the prices increase. Now, since actual prices increase, there's a further increase in expected prices and a further shift of the AS curve to the left. And in the new medium run equilibrium, after all adjustments uh, played out, we would have a higher price expectation and a higher actual price level and the lower natural level of output and the lower natural um, level of employment, so a higher equilibrium rate of unemployment. So here in this case, it's actually indeed the medium run equilibrium that changed because there was a shock in the economy to the supply side, which changed price expectations already initially, and then actual prices followed the price expectations. And it was not as previously, the actual prices changed and then price expectations caught up. So we've seen that the ASAD model describes the evolution of an economy uh, from the short run to the medium run, where in the short run the prices are fixed and in the medium run prices and price expectations adjust. But what we've also seen is that actually the model cannot cope with inflation dynamics. It just describes changes in the price level and that's not what we observe in the real world. So in the real world, we have inflation pressures and not price pressures, where not the price level changes once and for all, but actually the, the inflation rate changes and um, increases. 
So therefore, the ASAD model is not as popular uh, nowadays as it once was, and it's replaced by the ISLM PC model that can better cope with uh, inflation. So you're referred to the video that I have on the ISLM PC model if you are interested in this. However, the ASAD model is um, still quite intuitive and can <clears throat> be used as a starting point basically for analysis of policies as we've seen it or of um, kind of uh, an oil price shock and exogenous changes uh, in general. And um, it also has the nice feature that it is a straightforward aggregation actually from the microeconomic markets actually to the macroeconomic aggregate level. 